God is good all the time and his mercy endures forever. The feast of the Annunciation is celebrated on March 25th every year. On the solemnity of the Annunciation, we celebrate coming of the angel Gabriel to the Virgin Mary to announce to her the special mission God had chosen for her in being the mother of his only son. It is a day of hope, it is divine, and brings people together. This year, the CWR members from the Archdiocese of Nairobi will gather at St. Mary's Grounds Msongari in Westlands to commemorate solemnity of the Annunciation of the Lord. This celebration will begin with Rosary and CWR seminar at 9 a.m., followed by the Holy Mass at 10 a.m. The Holy Mass will be presided over by His Grace Philip Anyolo of the Archdiocese of Nairobi. During the Holy Mass, more than 2,000 CWR members from the Archdiocese of Nairobi will be commissioned. Follow the celebration live at Capuchin TV and on our social media platforms this Saturday, 25th March. How can you celebrate the Feast of the Annunciation? Recite the Hail Mary prayer and also help an expectant mother around you. This is in honor of St. Mary. Capuchin TV congratulates CWR members from the Archdiocese of Nairobi. May the love of Mary always impart you strength to face challenges of life with greatness. Happy Feast of Annunciation to you and your family. Keep watching Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. Word of God becomes a light for our path. You and I are called to extend a smile, to extend a work of mercy. Ujambo na karibu mahali popote pale ulipo ni matumaini tele Mungu Mwenyezi amekulinda. Hii hapa ni uvumbuzi wa wiki hii Dominika ya nne ya kipindi cha Kwaresima ila kabla hatujaendelea tuangazie vidokezo. Cari fratelli e sorelle. Buongiorno. Baba mtakatifu awataka waamini wasimamie ukweli na kushuhudia imani yao. Baraza la maskofu wa Katoliki hapa nchini wawataka viongozi wa kisiasa wafanye mazungumzo kwa ajili ya amani. Askofu mkuu Philip Anyolo awahimiza wanaume wa Katoliki kueneza utakatifu. Askofu mkuu Maurice Muhatia atoa sakramenti ya kipaimara kwa wakandidati zaidi ya mbili kwenye parokia mtakatifu Yosefu eneo la Uwai, Jimbo Kuu la Kisumu. Na vijana waitaka serikali kutumia sheria kikamilifu kupigana na ufisadi nchini. Karibu na tu andamani hadi mwisho jina langu ni Felix Juma. Baba mtakatifu Francisco aliongoza sala ya malaika wa Bwana kwa mahujaji na waumini waliofika katika uwanja wa kanisa kuu la mtakatifu Petro jijini Vatican Dominica iliyopita tarehe 16 Machi. Hii hapa ni taarifa yake. Cari fratelli e sorelle. Buongiorno. Kwenye tafakari yake baba mtakatifu alianza kwa kufafanua kuhusu muujiza wa Kristu Yesu wa kumponya mtu aliyekuwa kipofu tangu kuzaliwa kwake na vile jinsi muujiza huo ulipokelewa na kutafsiriwa vibaya na watu na vikundi huku wakitafuta wazazi wake kama wakosaji kwa tukio hilo Jesus giving sight to a man blind from birth but this wonder is badly welcomed by various people and groups let us look at the details 
accolgono questo le persone. And how did the various people welcome it? First of all, there are Jesus disciples who, faced with the man born blind, atterrano sul chiacchiericcio. They focus on small talk, and so they ask whether his parents or he were to blame. They seek a culprit. And we, many times, we fall into this. It's convenient to look for a culprit rather than asking more demanding questions in life. And Baba Mtakatifu alisema kuwa, Imani iliwezesha mtu huyo aliyekuwa kipofu kuwa jasiri na kuwa Kristu anakuwa chimichemi ya matumaini mapya kwa kumpa utu na heshima yake na baadaye anakuwa jasiri wa kutoa ushuhuda wa nguvu. He had already personally experienced in the indifference and contempt of the passers-by of those who considered him to be an outcast in society, useful at best for the pious practice of giving some alms. Now healed, he no longer fears those contemptuous attitudes because Jesus has given him his full dignity and this is clear and it always happens when Jesus heals you when Jesus heals us he gives us back our dignity Akiendelea na tafakari yake aliwapa mahujaji hao changamoto ya kuwa na shukrani kwa kutokazia upungufu dhambi na udhaifu wa wengine wawe vyombo na mashuhuda ya furaha wawe vyombo na mashuhuda wa furaha huruma na upendo kwa majirani zao kwa kujenga ujirani mwema What will we do today Like the blind man Do we know how to see the good and to be grateful for the gifts we receive I ask myself What is my dignity What is your dignity Yours and yours Baba mtakatifu akimalizia aliwataka waamini wajenge utamaduni wa kukubali na kupokea zawadi ya maisha kama ilivyokuwa kwa yule mtu aliyezaliwa kuwa kipofu na kuwataka waamini kuiga mfano bora kwa msaada na maombezi ya Bikra Maria mama wa Mungu na mtakatifu Yosefu Brothers and sisters let us ask today the grace to be surprised every day by God's gifts and to see the various circumstances of life even the most difficult ones to accept as occasions to do good as Jesus did with the blind man May our mother May our lady help us in this together with Saint Joseph the just and faithful man Baraza la Maskofu wa Katoliki hapa nchini walitoa taarifa kuhusu hali ya sasa inayoathiri taifa la Kenya. Taarifa hiyo ilitolewa kwa vyombo vya habari kutoka nyumba ya Donum Day kwenye eneo la Karen Jumatano tarehe 22 Machi na kusomwa na maskofu wa kuu wa Hashamu Martin Kivuva wa Jimbo Kuu Katoliki la Mombasa, Anthony Muhere wa Jimbo Kuu Katoliki la Nyeri na mwenzake Morris Muhatia wa Jimbo Kuu Katoliki la Kisumu. Katika taarifa hiyo, maskufu walieleza kuwa hata baada ya uamuzi wa mahakama ya upeo kuhusu matokeo uchaguzi uliopita, viongozi wa upinzani bado wanapinga matokeo hayo, hali inayoendelea kusababisha taharuki nchini. Our current challenges, you know them, you have gone through them. We want to convey very we had a very competitive elections and six months down the line The country is not yet settled politically. Even after declaring or the declaration by the Supreme Court on the outcome of the elections, there are those who still dispute on who won the elections. Furthermore, the saga surrounding the four IEBC commissioners who had a contrary view on the elections results announcement had become a bone of contention there is also the uh, the perception that the government is vindictive to targeted individuals who are being harassed on issues relating to taxation and acquisition of property Waliongeza kuwa nchi inatatizika kiuchumi na watu wanabanwa na gharama ya juu ya maisha pamoja na ushuru mkubwa kutokana na hitaji la madeni ya serikali. 
Maskofu hao walitoa wito kwa rais na viongozi wa upinzani kujaribu kuelekeana wao kwa wao katika mazungumzo na kutoa mapendekezo ya busara ambayo yatashughulikia matatizo ya kiuchumi ambayo yanaathiri sana taifa kwa sasa. Waliongeza kuwa ni mazungumzo pekee yanayoweza kutoa mapendekezo ya kutatua changamoto za kitaifa. With and listen to Honorable Raila Odinga and other leaders and come out with some reasonable proposals to address the main plights of our country specifically the high costs of living that needs urgent attention we also invite honorable raila odinga to accept dialogue for the good of our country We believe that a sitting dialogue that by sitting and dialogue can resolve this dangerous standoff Walikashifu vikali maneno ya viongozi wa upinzani ya kukataa kutambua serikali ya rais William Ruto na badala yake kupendekeza upinzani uchukue mamlaka serikali. Maskofu hao walisema Kenya ni nchi inayoienzi sheria huku wakitoa wito kwa kila raia kuheshimu katiba ya nchi hii ya Kenya. The call that the current government must resign and be replaced by the leader of Azimio la Umoja by acclamation is dangerous. It goes against the fact that Kenya is a country governed by the constitution. We went to vote and the results were contested in court. Our Supreme Court made its determination. Therefore, we have a constitutionally legitimate government. Any contestation can only be challenged in the courts demonstrations cannot annul or take over the constitution Felix Juma nikiripotia runinga ya Capchin Wanawake wanapokusanyika ni rahisi kutambua nia yao lakini kwa wanaume ni vigumu. Hayo ni maneno yake Mhashamu Philip Anyolo, askofu wa Jimbo Kuu Katoliki la Nairobi, alipongoza misa takatifu wakati wa siku kuu ya Mtakatifu Yosefu ambaye ni msimamizi na somo wa wanaume wa Katoliki pamoja na sherehe ya siku ya mtakatifu Yosefu ilikuwa pia siku ya kuwakaribisha wanachama wapya zaidi ya 140 kwenye chama hicho taarifa hiyo iliandaliwa na Sfedistas Mwanza Hashamu Anyolo aliwahimiza wanaume wa Katoliki wawe kielezo cha imani katika kanisa na hata familia Walk in faith Walk in the second reading He was born in the family of faith family of abraham so i say walk in faith like your fathers the fathers of faith aliwakumbusha kwamba njia moja ya wao kuendeleza injili na kutimiza wito wa Mungu ni iwapo wanaelekeza vijana katika imani katoliki in order to participate in this that we are doing we are practically implementing the call of the gospel those young people who have been born those young people who are uh, our own children have something to be uh, to be to receive from us that care that god wants us to give them to take care we are called even as a church to orientate people in the direction god wants to save us through the rules and the natural laws that he guides us through you can be so intelligent you can be have everything but make blunders make blunders you can make blunders and blunders lead to sin blunders lead to to sin kama njia moja ya kufanya mambo makuu, askofu mkuu aliwasihi wanaume wa Katoliki kutambua majukumu yao kama wanaume. If we know our roles and we take them fervently well in faith, we shall be walking on the path of faith. We shall walk on the path of 
faith and we shall do great things and we shall do greater things and we shall do greatest things i believe in that tarehe 16 mhashamu mkuu Morris Muhati aliongoza ibada ya misa na ku, ya kuaresima wa kandidati takriban 200 kwa mpako wa Christmas katika sakramenti ya Kipaimara sherehe ilifanyika katika parokia mtakatifu Yosefu eneo la Uwai jimbo kuu katoliki la Kisumu Mhashamu Muhati alitanguliza kusema kwamba sifa kuu ya Yosefu ya kumfanya kuwa mtakatifu ni kwamba yeye ni mume wa Boma na mume wa Bikira Maria mama yake Yesu Kristo. Mume wa Maria, Yosefu mume wa Maria. Maana yake sifa yake kuu moja wapo ya sifa ambazo zimemfanya kuwa mtakatifu ni kuwa mme wa Boma, mme wake Maria husband of Mary one of the most important qualities of Saint Joseph the husband of Mary Mary the mother of God the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ Aida alisema kwamba Mungu alipotaka kujifanya mwanadamu aliwateua na kuwachagua watu wenye sifa za chini kumtumikia ili kuonyesha ukuu wake na lengo lake kwa wanadamu Mungu alipotaka kujifanya mwanadamu. Angalia natazama watu ambao aliwachagua na kuwateua. Angalia mazingira ambayo alichagua ili mtoto wake azaliwe hapo. Kwanza ni Bikira Maria. Mwanamwali. Safi wa moyo. Alafu anamteua Yosefu Injili leo inatuambia alikuwa mwanamume mwenye haki. Kwa just man. Mwishoni aliwahimiza wanamume wote kujifunza kutoka kwa mtakatifu Yosefu kuwa watifu wenye heshima na wacha Mungu katika familia zao. Man, let us learn from Saint Joseph. Maximum respect for women. And for a man who is a catholic your wife a man who is a catholic your wife is the second woman to receive maximum respect Ukisalia kwenye jimbo kuu la Kisumu, Padre Felix Atinda aliongoza ibada ya misa Dominika ya nne ya kwaresima kwenye parokia mtakatifu Antonio Abate, yani St. Anthony the Abbot kwenye eneo la Ramba ambapo alimtaja mtakatifu Yosefu kama baba wa wokovu. Padri atinda alitanguliza mahubiri yake kwa kusema kwamba mtakatifu Yosefu ndiye baba wa wokovu wa Mkristo yeyote kupitia kwa maamuzi yake na kujitolea kwake. And therefore Joseph is the father of our salvation and in a way the father of our redemption by his decision and his willingness. There is something unique about the name Joseph when you read the bible you find that god always used somebody called joseph in very difficult and impossible situations akiendelea aliwahimiza waumini kufanya kazi kama yosefu mtakatifu ili kukidhi mahitaji ya roho na mwili kwa ajili ya neno lake mwenyezi mungu sometimes we lack the essentials of our lives we don't have enough we need many things in our lives But Joseph through his work always provided for the holy family and he continues to provide for each and every one of us in many ways that's why the needs in our life should not stress us but they should lead us to God and through intercession of Saint Joseph God will provide Akimalizia alimtaja mtakatifu Yosefu kama mlinzi wa kila mmoja hasa katika dunia leo pale ambapo analinda kanisa la Mungu na familia kwa kuwaombea kwa Mungu. 
we look at Joseph the protector, particularly in our world today, when our life is threatened by many things. And we see that he always protected the Holy Family and is there to protect the church through his intercession and protect each and every one of us. Felix Nyuma nikiripotia runinga ya Kapchin. Na mtarifa hiyo ya Jimbo Kuu Katoliki la Kisumu linatupeleka katika mapumziko mapofupi turudi baadaye. The word of God becomes a light for our path. You and I are called to extend a smile, to extend a work of mercy. Kapuchin TV, kitambulisho katoliki. Sunday, 26th March, Easter comes early at the newest church in town. Yes, we're talking about a Regina Shelley Parish in Karen. The Regina Shelley Choir presents Lenten Musical Concert that edition with the theme Celebrating the Joy of Easter in Synodality. The guest singers will be St. Bernadette's Choir from Our Lady of Guadalupe Parish, Adam Zakade. This concert runs from 2 to 5 p.m. Entrance charges are 200 Kenya shillings for adults and 100 Kenya shillings for children. Come, let's praise and enjoy together, either relaxing or singing along. Capuchin TV is musically proud to be associated with Catholic choirs. <laughs> Kapuchin TV, kitambulisho katoliki. The word of God becomes a light for our path. You and I are called to extend a smile, to extend a work of mercy. Na mkaribu tena kwenye taarifa zetu tuandamane hadi tamati jina langu ni Felix Juma. Tunaenda kwenye taarifa nyingine. Anapotupa kazi Mungu anaangalia moyo wa mtu. Haya ni maneno yake Padre George Wambua aliongoza misa saa na nusu Jumapili ya nne kipindi cha Kwaresima kutoka kanisa kuu Katoliki Familia Takatifu au Holy Family Basilica kwenye jimbo kuu la Nairobi. Padri Wambua katika homilia yake aliwataka waumini kutofautisha kati ya upofu wa moyo na ule wa mwili. Kuna tofauti ya kile tunaita upofu wa mwili na upofu wa kiroho. Spiritual blindness and physical blindness. Mara nyingi kuna watu unakuta tunaona kwa macho ya nyama. Lakini kwa macho ya moyo atuoni pamoja na hayo aliwasii wapendo wa Mungu kuwa na utulivu iwapo wanahitaji chochote katika maisha yao kwani mambo ya Mungu yana nyakati zake wakati wa Koresima ndugu zangu 
ni wakati wa kujitakaza kutoka ndani ni wakati wa kutubu dhambi zetu na kusafisha nyoyo yetu kwa sababu tutahukumiwa kulingana na yale mambo tunafanya hata yale tunaficha kwenye mioyo yetu na waomba ndugu zangu siku hii ya leo tunjiulize nje ni mambo gani tunafanya ya nje ndio watu waone lakini tunajua ndani ya mioyo yetu tumenjazwa na chuki na fitina na maovu mengi we need to pray for patience also in life and especially patience with god at wait for god's time mungu anachukua wakati wake kutubariki mungu anachukua wakati wake kutuongoza kutufikisha mahali anapotaka kutupeleka god's time is the best muda wa mungu katika maisha yetu ama mambo ya mungu yanachukua nyakati zake na hiyo ndiyo jambo la maana god's time is the best in our life so sometimes let us not force issues let us allow god to be god in our life and allow god to take us gradually to the place where he has prepared for us kwenye kilele cha umilia yake padri wa mbua aliwahimiza waumini kuomba mungu ili wapate mwanga wa kristu na waweze kueneza neno lake tuombe mungu atupatie hiyo nguvu atupatie huo mwanga wa kristu kwa sababu tunaambiwa leo kristo ndio mwanga wetu yeye ndiye anaponya huo upofu wa moyo atuponye na tupatie nguvu ndio tukitoka hapa tukatangaze injili duniani kote tutangaze ukweli tusimamie ukweli na haki tuhakikishe kwamba sisi tunafuata mambo ya mwanga tuache mambo ya ngiza kama vile tumesikia kwenye somo la pili Tukisalia kwenye kanisa hilo hilo la familia takatifu Padre Simon Mwangi aliongoza misa ya saa na nusu katika muendelezo wa Jumapili ya msimu wa Kwaresima. Kwenye mahubiri yake Shemasi Geoffrey Wakanyi alikazia umuhimu wa kuwa na imani thabiti katika maisha ya Mkristo Mkatoliki. They lived with Jesus. They accompanied him wherever he went. They saw him perform miracles. But here they are questioning Jesus between this man and his parents who sinned they represent those of us who profess the faith in Christ but we are still stuck we still cling to our past tradition and our cultural setup we profess here Jesus is lord and yet we still cling to those cultural aspects of our life alitoa himizo kwa waumini kujitolea kuwasaidia wanahitaji kama Yesu alivyojitolea others grow as well we want them to be dependent on us bila mimi uwezi there are people who are like that they want people to remain dependent on them are you a victim how many of us who rejoice in the suffering of others we can't help them stand on their own we need the healing touch of jesus And something interesting about this healing of Jesus is how he spat on this man. And looking at this, I just imagine by spotting on him, Jesus showed that he is giving a part of him. What about us? We not only receive a part of him, we receive the whole of him by our reception of the Holy Eucharist. Just imagine that Jesus at that time gave this man a part of him as for our case he gives us a whole of him of him of him of him Yesi loam eneo la Machakos kwa kongamano la siku mbili kongamano hilo kwa mada vijana kwa amani mshikamano maisha ya staha au youth for peace cohesion and dignified livelihoods ililianza siku hiyo Vijana takriban moja kutoka maeneo ya mashariki ya chini au Lower Eastern walikutana katika kanisa la PCS loam eneo la Machakos kwa kongamano la siku mbili Kongamano hilo kwa mada vijana kwa amani mshikamano na maisha ya star au youth for peace cohesion and dignified livelihoods lilianza siku ya Alhamisi tarehe 16 na kukamilika siku ya Ijumaa tarehe 
vijana hao walisema kuwa changamoto kubwa inayokabili taifa kwa sasa ni tishio la machafuko na vita zinazochangiwa na wanasiasa huku wakiomba vijana wapewe nafasi ya kuhamisisha ubora wa amani walikanusha madai kwamba kuna watu alufu mia nane wanaoingia katika soko la ajira kila mwaka ila walisema ni watu alufu mia moja pekee wanaoingizwa katika ajira ya rasmi ya kulipwa hivyo walitaka serikali kusaidia vijana katika eneo hilo ili kujitosa katika ujasirimali wenye faida waliwasii vijana mwenzao kuwa na mtazamo maalum na kutumia fursa za kuongeza ujuzi wao katika nyanja mbalimbali kama njia ya kukua na, na kujiendeleza na tukifika tamati ni kwamba katika jimbo kuu la Nairobi Ijumaa iliyopita tarehe saba kwenye uwanja wa shule ya St Mary's eneo la Msongari jamaa waumini na marafiki walijumuika katika ibada ya kumsindikiza marehemu Padre Paul Njoroge ibada hiyo iliongozwa na askofu mkuu Philip Anyolo akishirikiana na mwadhamama John Kardinali Njue pamoja na askofu David Kamau na hapo Ibada hiyo iliongozwa na askofu mkuu Philip Nyolo akishirikiana na Mwadhamama John Kardinali Njue pamoja na askofu David Kamau. Kwenye mahubiri yake askofu Kamau alianza kwa kuwafafanulia waumini maana ya kifo huku akitoa sababu kubwa inayochangia watu kuogopa kifo. Kama tujuavyo kweli kifo sio kitu tungechaka kujadiliana na kuongea juu yake binadamu anaogopa kifo na kifo kinakuwa tisho kubwa sana katika maisha ya binadamu kwani watu huenda safari na wanarudi hata wanaenda kwa mwezi na, na wakarudi lakini hakuna aliyesafiri kwa ajili ya kifo na karudi na kwa hivyo sisi wote tunaogopa kifo lakini swali ni hili kwa nini tunaogopa kifo alisema kuwa mkristu ambaye ni mkarimu na matendo yake yanaambatana na maisha ya ukristu hata sahaulika mtu kama huyo alisema askofu anapumzika kwa amani wakati wake unapoadia huku akimlinganisha na padri njoroge aliyaga dunia na hekima ya Sulaimani katika somo la kwanza inazidi kumsifu mtu mcha Mungu. Mtu mkarimu. Na kusema maisha na matendo yake haitasahulika. Mtu kama huyu hupumzika kwa amani na heshima na jina lake huishi daima. Na roho yake iko mikononi mwa Mungu. Mwishoni mwa mahubiri yake mwasha mkamao aliwataka waumini kutumia vizuri mali na talanta ambazo Mungu amewatunukia kwa kutafuta ufalme wa mbinguni wala sio mambo ya dunia. Lakini ufalme wa Mungu ndio nini? Ufalme wa Mungu ni maisha mema, maisha ya upendo, maisha na ya amani, kusamehe, kush, kushirikiana Ufalme wa Mungu ni kuishi kwa unyenyekevu, utulifu kwa, kwa upendo na kuwa wa karimu. Na hapo ndipo tamati ya uvumbuzi ya wiki hii. Shukran kwa wale wote waliohusika kufanikisha taarifa hizi na kuombea heri njema za kipindi cha Kwaresma. Mungu akubariki na kushushie rehma. Jina langu ni Felix Juma hadi wiki ijayo. Kwa heri. The word of God becomes a light for our path. You and I are called to extend a smile, to extend a work of mercy. Kapuchin TV, Kitambulisho Katoliki. We also appreciate the services that we are given by the Caption TV. Caption TV, uh, I think, 
I've heard many people telling us, Father, we are able to follow your mass. I think that's a great thing. Let us appreciate the captures. We have agreed with the Caption TV they will be covering all our masses, including the weekday masses. Weekday masses they will be covering. The intention being to preach and to reach out to other people, even those who are not able to attend the mass. This is the only Catholic TV that we have. We have never had any Catholic TV. So let us pray for them, let us support them, let us encourage them so that it will be fully established. They are still limited. They are still limited in the sense that they don't have enough equipment. If they had enough equipment, they would have, you know, they would be able to cover several masses now in our Kidalses and in our country, Kenya. You know, like, I wish Catholics would support this TV so that it can be as strong as other secular we have been so much manipul man manipulated by secular TVs. Why don't we also have our own? And we can channel now our information. Sometimes I wonder about Christians. You know, when we, t we take our advert to the secular TV, it is okay, but you are supporting it. Sindio, because you are paying. We have also ways of supporting our captured TV. We have, we have. We can support in many ways. Now they are so limited, as I said, because of the resources that they have. So let us support them as an individual. Think of how you can support this TV. Twendele kufanya kazi, baby number 5106789. Account name Caps TV. Ni mara nyingine tena ambapo mama kanisa anawaalika waumini wote kuadhimisha kipindi cha mfungo wa Kwaresma wa kila mwaka. Mwaka huu, siku 40 za kipindi cha Kwaresma ni kuanzia tarehe 22 Februari, Jumatano ya Majivu hadi tarehe 8 Aprili, Jumamosi kuu. Idara ya haki na amani kwenye baraza la maskufu wa Katoliki hapa nchini KCCB Inawalika waumini wote kushiriki kikamilifu katika kampeni ya Kwaresma. Kaulimbiu ya kampeni hiyo mwaka huu ni upatanisho kwa taifa shirikishi. Kuna tafakari tano kwa kila juma katika kipindi cha Kwaresma. Wiki ya kwanza upatanisho, wiki ya pili afya ya akili, wiki ya tatu tumaini la jamii yetu, wiki ya nne haki ya kiuchumi. Na wiki ya tano, elimu ya uhusiano viumbe na mazingira. Kipindi cha kwa resma kina usisha ya futayo. Moja, kupako majivu mwanzo wa kwa resma. Pili, kufunga. Tatu, kusali zaidi. Ne, matendo ya huruma. Tano, kwenda kitubio. Na la sita, kusali njia ya msalaba kila yuma. Kapuchin TV. Inawatakia heri na baraka kwenye kipindi cha kwa resma. Endelea kutazama Kapuchin TV. Kituo tambulika cha imani na maadili katoliki. Kwa 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 kwa